five things I like about Finorel. The first being the tutorials. So the tutorials are kind of a double-edged sword because they often have like things about them that are outdated. So you might run them and they might not work or there might be some that are incomplete. However, by and large, the majority of the tutorials work. You can run them in a collab. You can run them on your own machine if you want and they work great. Before I found out about FinRL, I was just like hacking away through documentation, just constantly trying to debug things that um, were should have been super simple to just do. And there weren't a whole lot of tutorials on things like uh, Jim Any Trading and things like that. But the guys that put this together really did an awesome job taking you from a beginner to more advanced use cases of FinRL. And there are a lot of different uh, asset types that you might want to use from crypto, equity, and and options, and FX, and, as well as other more advanced optimization type tutorials that I haven't really dipped my toes in. You get the sense that the creators of FinRL really believe that anyone can approach this technology and begin to use it and begin to learn it. And, and they have a really awesome repository here including a roadmap of certain tutorials that you should use um, to get you to a place where you're really, really in tune with how to use this technology. And it's definitely the most efficient way I've been able to grow in my progress with reinforcement learning, and especially with regards to finance and investing. So that would most definitely be my number one thing that I love about FinRL is the amount of resources there for you to learn and grow your skills. Second thing I like about it is the data processor downloader. Um, if you've seen my other videos, you may have noticed that I'm like pulling from Alpha Vantage API or I'm pulling from Yahoo Finance or I'm pulling from somewhere else and I'm making the call multiple times in order to get a large enough data set that will uh, facilitate the training that I need. Now with the Yahoo downloader or the data processor, you can um, essentially put in like your DAO 30 is an inbuilt uh, module inside of FinRL that you can call and you'll get all the tickers for the Dow Jones 30 um, currently. And the other second part of that is you can run it through a data processor and the data processor will automatically attach technical indicators to the uh, data frame that you've collected and the different portfolio that you've created. And it will even do things like turbulence and it will do even a VIX index, which is a volatility index. Um, and this is like really awesome because you don't have to pull in other packages. Uh, I was using like TA lib. I was using uh, all, all sort. I've tried. I've tried a lot of things, but um, especially when you're learning, especially when you're first trying out, that's not an optimal way of learning. I think it's uh, you can start to explore with different types of technical indicators and choose the ones you want. Um, I think when you have a better grasp of what those technical indicators actually mean. But for the beginning, when you're just focused on learning how to do reinforcement learning, having a pre-built package that will automatically process your data for you becomes really valuable um, in your building out of solutions or your experimentation with reinforcement learning with investing. I think you'll notice that throughout this video, a lot of the reasons that I like FinRL is because it's very quick and it's very efficient. So this, this is, and that those two things contribute to a faster learning curve where you're not fighting against lots of different pieces that need to come together. It's all there for you so that you can experiment and develop and try new things um, without having to go and learn other packages or integrate other packages um, FinRL really excels at providing you the tools that you need to quickly iterate um, different tests and different uh, training environments. The third thing that I really like about FinRL is the support for variety of agents and models. One of the first things that struck me was 
when I opened up their introductory Jupyter Notebook, they had a bunch of if statements. They had all the models that you could use. And if you turn them to true, then you could essentially pug and play the same um, later down. Like for instance, if you said PPO was true and A2C was true, but DDPG was false, um, you could essentially activate multiple trainings of different models um, by setting it up as tr a Boolean um, triggers, so to speak. And the fact that you can use all those different models from stable baselines, or you can integrate the elegant RL, which is also something that the AI for Finance repository built, um, you can use a variety of different models and a variety of different integrated solutions that, again, make it a lot easier for you to test new and different data or data frames. Fourth thing is that there's a decent level of debugging. So because it's open source and because there's a lot of documentation on it, well, I shouldn't say documentation, but there's a lot of tutorials out there that allow you to, when you look at the stack trace, go back through and try to figure out what you've done um, that was messed up. Because a lot of it is automated and modular, and you just end up setting up your portfolio, and then you send, end up setting your environment and agent, and a lot of those things are just activated. It's hard to explain without showing you actual code, but those things make debugging a little bit easier because you can go to that module within the repository and read through the class to see exactly what is what is triggering the stack trace or what it, whatever is blocking the execution. So there's a decent level of debugging. I think it could be better. I, uh, I'll get into in another video some things that I wish Finarel could improve upon. Um, and maybe those are things that I should just contribute to the repository, I don't know. Um, one thing that I would do is I would copy the stack trace and put it into something like ChatGPT or Gemini. Um, and then there's an even better solution for figuring out what you've done and what you can change to make it work. And the fifth thing that I really love about Finarel, I don't know if this is something specific to Finarel necessarily, but in my mind, it's sort of the best in category. If you did Jim any trading, it's a very sparse and I feel like a clunky thing to use. Finarel uses Jim any trading, but I think uh, Finarel uh, really provides you a, a more robust set of tools for you to do the things that you actually want to do. Um, and I haven't really come across other packages that can really compete with Finarel. Um, I've used some in other videos where uh, you can do things like crypto and you set up wallets and the process of it just doesn't sit well as well with me as something like Finarel, which is a more typical data science project and has actually going through their tutorials has made me realize that there is a process to reinforcement learning itself where you have certain steps of setting up your data, and then you set up your agent, you set up your environment, you train it, and then you have some sort of back testing that you do. And that's a more typical structure, and doing those different elements of that structure are a lot easier and a lot more intuitive with Finarel. So I think it's a much better in-class solution. There might be others out there that I'm just not aware of. I found out through Finarel, through YouTube, and not just like a recommendation through YouTube, I was making videos about investing and I could tell that viewers that were watching my videos were also searching for Finarel. And so it was really through you guys that I learned about Finarel um, because I could see what you're looking at and what other kind of videos you like. Um, and so that's how I found it. So thank you for searching for Finarel because it's something that I really enjoy using it's something that I want to dive into a little bit more um, until I find something that dethrones it. I think it'll be um, 
um, going to stay the best in class. There's a few things that I wish could be improved upon and maybe I can contribute to those things. I've never contributed to an open source repository before, so I don't know exactly how that works. Um, I'm not super familiar with Git since I'm self-taught. A lot of this stuff is a self-learning and development environment for me. Um, but anyway, um, that'll be in a future video of what those things are and what those things could be for me to contribute. Um, but until then, uh, take care and bye.